think there are enormous humanitarian challenges facing women and girls, be that in uh, crises situations, human-induced or indeed natural disasters. The Australian Government is very conscious of the need that we have to promote and protect the rights of women and girls generally, but in particular in conflict situations, and that involves uh, the prevention of or the elimination of uh, sexual violence in conflict, as well as the need to advocate and promote women's role in peace building uh, and peacemaking efforts. You've said previously that violence against women is the most pervasive and damaging problem in the world today. What are some of the ways Australia is addressing issues such as sexual violence in conflict zones? We're particularly conscious of 1325, the resolution uh, that relates to women, peace and security. And Australia has a strong advocacy role. We want to ensure that we remove the impunity for perpetrators, particularly of sexual violence in conflict. We want to ensure a greater role for women in decision making generally, but particularly in peacemaking and peace building and peace negotiations. How can increasing women's participation in leadership make a difference to conflict prevention and peace building specifically? Well of course greater representation of women in decision making positions is essential anyway but we know it has a demonstrable impact on peace building and avoiding conflict. There are studies that show for example that if you decrease the proportion of women in a parliament by around 5%, that that nation or that country or government is five times more likely to use military intervention in order to resolve or solve a conflict. We also know that greater numbers of women in a parliament or decision-making institutions will address in more detail and in a better way the issues that affect women and their families. And that includes reporting of violence against women, it includes addressing issues of violence against women and more specifically it includes the issue of sexual violence in conflict as well being addressed. So there's a clear link between greater numbers of women in parliaments and institutions and reducing conflict but also managing peace and of course peace building. Globally, states including Australia are taking steps to promote gender equality and stronger gender awareness among their military forces. So how would a more gender sensitive military better protect and empower women and girls in conflict situations? Well we know that women and children, in fact men and boys, are all differently affected by conflict and by war. But we do know one thing too and that is that women and girls, although they're less likely to be participants or fighting in wars and conflicts, they're disproportionately affected. So we know that a gender sensitive army is more likely to take into account not only the needs of girls but also with women and girls respond to and hopefully prevent issues like sexual violence in conflict. We need gender advisors through our military. We need to ensure that our military generally understands the particular impact on women and girls of conflict and post-conflict situations. So we've got to ensure that we have more women engaged in our military. That's an important component. You did mention uh, Resolution 1325. How has uh, programs associated with this resolution made a difference to the lived experiences of women and girls around the world? I think the resolution 1325, the fact that it put front and centre and explicitly stated a role for women in peacekeeping, peace building and acknowledged the disproportionate impact of conflict on women and girls, I think that has had a huge impact. Of course subsequent resolutions that deal explicitly with the issues of sexual violence also have had an impact on the live reality of women and girls around the world. But most importantly, I think it's woken up governments. I think governments have understood that they've got to implement national action plans. They've got to respond to these issues, whether it's in their own communities or indeed in their region, or as good global citizens, we all have a part to play. So I think it's definitely had an impact, but there's still work to do.